Thank you for um, spreading such a, a positive, shining light. Um, uh, my question is a, is a fun kind of question. Um, I was wondering, is it possible to have a conscious conversation? Yes. Yes. <laughs> have you experimented with that? Yes, I have. And? Um, I came to the conclusion that maybe two people wouldn't actually be talking to each other in a conscious conversation. They would be sitting opposite each other in awareness. Oh, well, that's even better. But uh, <laughs> a conscious conversation is basically a conversation uh, where, let's least between two people, uh, each person is uh, not identified with their viewpoint, their perspective, their mental position. They put forward their perspective, their positions, their viewpoints without any sense of self in it because they don't need that because their sense of self is derived from the presence that they can sense throughout the conversation in the background of their being. And then they can play with concepts, they can play with opinions, they can play with words, they can play with arguments even. To, this is My argument is this, and then the other person, well, and mine is that. I, uh, there's a, the, the famous saying, uh, we, uh, what is it, we agree to disagree, or something like that, that sounds relatively conscious, because if you, at least you're, you're, you're not, if you're not identified with your positions, then you think, that's fine, we agree, that's okay, it's interesting. Self-identification with mental positions is the unconsciousness, because then you will be defending your mental positions, but you're really defending your sense of self. And this is why these conversations become can easily and very quickly become very unpleasant. They, be, they are unconscious. So in unconscious conversation, and with very unconscious people, it is can even happen, I mean, you can probably read about it in the papers all the time, they get so, so defensive and aggressive about their respective mental positions, they start physically attacking each other. <laughs> it even happens sometimes, you can see it in, certain parliaments in some places uh, 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 and, and suddenly all these members of parliament start attacking each other. Uh, Washington sometimes gets close but it probably hasn't quite had that what it could happen there too, who knows. The, so um, what is your experience with being engaged in conversation? Do you easily get into that position where you start to defend your sense of self? Um. In my case, I've been experimenting with uh, thoughtless awareness. Yes. And I've been present, uh, appreciating and, and being aware of the essence of the individual in front of me. Yes. Listening to their words, and, and but just allowing that presence of acceptance. Um, however, I've struggled with uh, returning a conversation point in that state. Yes. Uh, that's right. <laughs> uh, and that's where the real practice begins. Uh, uh, because if you kind of withdraw from engagement, then it's relatively easy to sustain presence. But when you begin to actually interact verbally, and thoughts, of course, thoughts become words, yes. uh, then the real practice begins. And especially if you engage in a conversation with certain things that you feel strongly about. <laughs> and ideally you choose somebody who has the op totally opposite viewpoints, then you can really practice. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's funny you should mention that because um, <laughs> I'm an acupuncturist. Sorry? Uh, I'm an acupuncturist. Oh yeah. And I've just started a position in a hospital in central Sydney. And uh, the way I operate with energy medicine is in an opposite position to Western medicine in many respects from a 
yeah, thought-based point of view. Uh, and so I'm meeting a lot of individuals who have got a very strong position and uh, I'm trying my best to allow this concept into this new institution. Uh, so I should imagine I'll be facing a lot of challenges. Yes, so you can, there's a lot of, you can be, will be practicing conscious conversation, especially with physicians who say, I don't believe in all that, and I know uh, uh, that's an, all, that's a lot of rubbish, but you do what you do, but uh, 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 yes. <laughs> then that's, that could be an interesting conscious conversation. So, uh, so very, can be challenging, but the, the art is to remain present even as you put forward your point of view so that, and this is important, I've said it before, but I say it again, <laughs> so that you don't identify with whatever thoughts you are expressing. Identify meaning that they constitute your sense of self, and that's unconscious. That is self-identification with thinking. That's the essence of unconsciousness. And so, in order to counteract that, because there is an enormous pull when you start arguing with somebody, <laughs> or they argue with you, they, to, you need to, there needs to be a high degree of alertness in you, and that alertness is presence. Mm. And that alertness needs to be there, and then the words need to come out of that state of alertness, so that you don't get so, and that gives you your sense of who you are, your sense of self is in the, in the presence. Then you can play with concepts and words. Then you can put forward your viewpoints and even if they are, your viewpoints are being challenged, you will not feel attacked in your sense of self. And so that's the, that is the essence of conscious conversation. I wish you luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.